What about the gentleman who died in North London? Yes, we, uh, he's with us. She sent us the uh, burial certificate. So when we're doing the burial, tomorrow? It's up to you. We're waiting yes. for your instruction. And we bury him tomorrow? Okay. Fine. Okay. Right. Yeah. See how it goes. Okay. Sure. Working here is a 24 hour a day, seven days a week job. Thank you very much. The amount of stress that we experience sometimes is immense. I can still help you, maybe. Uh, I'm his boss. Yes, I know. Okay, fine. Okay, no problem. I'm Ghulam Taslim, and I'm a Muslim funeral director here in London. I'm now part-time, and I'm letting the young people take over. So what will happen now is we have taken Miss Valentina in front of the Imam for prayers. So it's Miss Valentina's coffin and we have another funeral happening today. Yeah. Yeah. So after the prayers finish, we will take the deceased down to the Maryam Centre. So the Maryam Centre is the tall nine floor building at the back of the masjid. Okay. Inshallah, once the janaza is over, we will take you down into the Maryam Centre. And in one of the rooms, we will do a quick viewing of the deceased. As soon as you're ready, my colleagues will take you to the hearse and we go. Okay. Uh, the lady sister who passed away um, was Muslim. The nephew and the people that came to our office, they're, they're Christian. I believe they're a bit vague in terms of what happens at a Muslim funeral. As you know, Islamic Muslim is very quick, basic and simple in that sense. But we will look after them and explain what's happening. My grandson, Khalid uh, Saif, he's come in uh, in the last six months and we hope that we can train him to take over from me, to carry on to traditions, to carry on the service for the people here in London. Allah, please forgive us, Wallah. Wallah, today she is returned to you, Allah. As your servant, Wallah, please forgive her, Allah. Wallah, we are your servant, family as far as I remember I've always been funeral directors so I've been around the idea of death and death as an everyday thing it's uh, carrying on my family's legacy mum do you want a cup of tea my mum actually went into the company because my great-grandfather wanted a little bit of help so she went for a week and then he turned into years and she just carried on. Thank you. But she decided she wanted to go back teaching. I was quite surprised you wanted to actually do this and I didn't know whether it was just because it was an easy option because you're like, oh, I don't want to go to university, I'll just go and work here. But you really wanted to do it, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You really enjoyed it and I think you're quite good at it, so. My dad's a big character and it's really difficult because for 20 years, um, over that 20 years, we, we sort of stopped being father and daughter and became business partners, um, which challenged Islamically how I was dealing with him and talking to him. And there's this very much this respect thing. Um, and we, we deal with things very, very differently. I was in partnership with my dad only up until recently. Muna was here for 20 years and she decided that she would stand back for a while because maybe she wanted to direct 
Haji Tasim funerals and I was standing in her way. We have women come here, their husbands have died, and they can relate to a woman better than they can a man, especially with Asian women. So we need a woman's touch here, and I think it will be coming back. We have about 30,000 plus uh, Muslim population here in the Whitechapel, East London area. And this has always been the kind of melting pot of uh, Southern England. Abs. You know them lovely people who visit the mosque every now and then? Not only do they go over to um, the East London Mosque to cause trouble, they've been over to Northern Ireland, to, the, to the, their lovely little towns, and causing crap over there. Bunch of football hooligans. And they came here the other day. It was a bit good. They just passed. Well, but I don't think it was EDL, it was the other one. Deputy leader of the far right group Britain's First has been arrested in London over a speech he made at a rally in Belfast this summer. Do you remember, Jim? I was here to pick up the kids and it was a Saturday. Absolutely. Saturday working. Great, your street was closed off because you had the Bang Gordies down this end and I'm sure it was the other lot down the other end. You know? And yet they don't live in the area. I don't know. It's not what they live here, it's what they believe. I mean, all right, look, there's, there's Ibrim sitting over there and there's you and there's me. We work together, we get on together. Right? Sometimes. Right, I want to throw some at him in a minute. Well, we all get on together, right? We all respect one another's views, yeah? To a point of we, we agree to disagree sometimes. But we don't ram our views down people's throats. No. Do we? I do get a bit fearful, just in case somebody attacks or whatever. I do you have fear. to. When they're down here, I'm like, OK, is anything... Where's it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Yeah, especially when you've got the kids. Khalil. When I go to Grounds of Peace, do I need to give them the original death certificate? Yes, you have to give them the original green certificate. OK, it has to be the original. No problem. It's law in this country, you have to have the green certificate. Okay, original, no OK? No Any problems, give me a ring. Bye, thank you again, Stop. bye. You only bury somebody once, and people remember things when they go wrong, weddings and funerals. And if you do it right, the way my dad used to do it, then that's good. And if you do it wrong, those people will never forget you and will always curse you. Um, Trudy? Yes, my love. This is the picture of Dad and me. Sure, yeah, when I was about five years of age, because my father wasn't very happy about having photographs taken. Mm. And my mother's in the sari, and uh, I'm sure this was about 1956 this was taken. Around about the mid-60s, uh, when uh, there was an influx of uh, Muslim people arriving here in East London, mainly Bangladeshis, or at that time it was East Pakistan, um, the, the need for a funeral service grew. So my father purchased a black uh, ambulance van and started to do the funerals here in London. Ghulam Tazlim Ali, who is only 17, is an imam. He deputizes for his father, who is away on pilgrimage to Mecca. I grew up here in this area, and we had this phenomena called bashing. We had right-wing groups coming along, looking for Asians to beat up, just for the sake of it. My father was beaten up, and um, it wasn't, it wasn't a good time in the East End of London. My mum was Welsh. She converted to Islam during the Second World War with my father. She was a coal miner's daughter. Can you imagine the stigma of a white lady marrying a dark person? But she didn't care. But I'm also proud to be a Bangladeshi as well. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's my dad. That's my dad roughly um, four weeks before he died. And Ismail, when he graduated. Mm. And uh, Muna, when she graduated. She sees the world in a different way because being younger than me, she can maybe project forward where I don't. That's why I think politicians shouldn't be allowed to be politicians after 65. Let some young blood 
fire us away because they've got better ideas and see things better than we do. We're always thinking in the past and they're thinking in the future and that's important. So I do miss her, yes. Today we have the inauguration of the Strong Room for the first British Muslim archives and guests from all different walks of life have come to join us in the celebrations of this kind of pivotal moment. Haji Taslim set up the country's first and indeed it was Europe's first Muslim burial service. We're hopefully going to see Muna and her family members coming in. But um, we're starting at 5.30, so fingers crossed she'll, she'll make it on time. She's got uh, 15 minutes. So where is she? <laughs> Maybe you should call her. Asian time. Okay, so I've just missed it, have I? Okay. We just finished, basically. Perfect timing. <laughs> okay, so where's this plaque going? This is going to go in the Marion Centre foyer, just before you go down to the strong room, so right. you probably can see it, because we don't want to hide it in there. Okay. We wanted to put it in public domain. Oh, that's well, lovely. So. It's really funny, because I didn't realise when they said the unveiling of the plaque, that it's actually a plaque that we are on. Maybe you can take a photo and I can send it to Dad. It'd be nice for Dad to see that I was here accepting it. Give him some idea of what went on. There's a bit of excitement in the room. Apparently they haven't all come to see me, but the Mayor of London is here, Mr Sadiq Khan. He's quite short, isn't he? There were banners up explaining how my granddad became the caretaker. I felt a lot of love in the room for him. So many people that I didn't actually know but knew of me or knew who I was came up to speak to me. On this one here, it records that my dad was at the meeting um, and my granddad. <laughs> After some heated discussion, the bill was approved and passed for payment. And at the time, Mr Tasim Ali was requested not to do any burials on behalf of the fund before getting prior consent from the Honourable Treasurer. Sounds like my grandfather. Someone dies, bury them quickly, because that's what you're meant to do. And I think what they're saying there is you need to make sure you can get permission first that you're going to get the money. So, welcome to the strong room of the Eastern Mosque. So, your family and your contribution has gone to building this room which will house history. This is my great granddad. So he was a sailor, a Lashkar. You can see like all the ports of engagement, port of discharge, like all the way from Calcutta to London to is that Glasgow. Glasgow. Yeah, absolutely. So he went from Calcutta to Glasgow, yeah, yeah. back to Calcutta, Rotterdam. Birkenhead. Yeah, that's, yeah. My granddad was in Birkenhead. Oh, really? <laughs> he got arrested holding my dad. Okay. They thought he'd stolen him. Oh, really? They thought oh. he'd nicked a white kid. Oh, <laughs> OK. Because that's my dad crazy. was quite, uh, you know, yeah. back then there weren't many mixed... So look, Where's that? to Bombay. Um, and back to London. Yeah. I've seen the Muslim community grow so much, especially in the East End, to what it is now. And I wish my grandfather could see this now. And my children will have no idea of the struggles my granddad had on, you know, when he first came over here, trying to get halal meat. You know, where would you eat? This sort of thing, it shows how people came over and then just, you know, the struggles they probably had. Can you please make prayers for my father, Mr. Abdul Rashid? Inshallah, we always will make prayers.
My father just passed away literally in the morning. Um, 79 year old man, and I mean, he's terminally ill, cancer. Um, he's been suffering for three to four months. My dad's been in this country for many, many years, so my dad went through a lot. He went through a lot. I don't think I was the best person as a son, but the last five years I've changed, 10 years I've changed, so alhamdulillah, we've gone to our dean, both of us, father, son, brothers, sisters, and this is gonna be a big time in our life, so I mean, it's gonna bring us close to Allah, bring us close to our family members, and in the future, inshallah, people, people recognize how, how precious people are around them, especially your father and your mothers, and yeah, when they go, they go, and it's, it's, There's no replacement. No, nah, it's, it's no replacement, bro. But now, alhamdulillah, but it's still, this is time you know, you, that you need you to be stand up like a man now. Because Definitely, bro. Your changes is, is yes. good for your father, yes. it's not only for you. Yes. Because whatever you've done, yes. it's back to our parents. Yes. Look after your mother, look after your sisters. Inshallah. And inshallah, you'll be fine. <coughs> and much you can just pray for your father all the time. Don't pick him in your prayers. Very true. Uh, Inshallah, Rahman Rahim, you can go okay, back okay. in the, no the Medium Center. You can do it with the washing. I want to say every death sticks out for you. This is somebody's loved one. It's not something you walk in there and you can take lightly. Every single day you meet somebody that makes you feel grateful or thankful that your loved ones are still here. It moulds the way you view life and then how you deal with your family and your friends. Life's short. All right, what's going on there? Just ringing Helen doing hospital. All right. Hello, ma'am. Could I have the mortuary, please? Hello, mortuary. I'll be from Taslin. <laughs> So if we come 3.45, will the scan happen, for example? The scan's been booked for 4 o'clock. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Right, let's get, let's get moving, because time's now, time's now flying. You'll get there, don't worry. Right, OK, right. We have five funerals be at Gardens of Peace, inshallah. We've got Mumina, Yudu Abdul, and then there's Salim on as well. The account number is 246. They pull me in today because A, we've got so many funerals, so they need drivers. I'll be at the cemetery, kind of making sure everything goes down well. Because there will be pandemonium. Death is such a leveller. I see it all of the time. You meet people from beggar to king and it gives me a, a big insight into life itself. Every day is a bonus. Come on, sisters, please don't block the road. Stand to do what your heart tells you to do. Be kind. The kiss may be the last kiss. The anger may be the last anger you show somebody. Forgive quickly. Don't hold a grudge. It is, it is my one, yeah. OK, brother, this way, please. This way, this way, brother. Excuse me, please. Sorry. We are all God's creatures, whether we are Muslim, Gentile, Jew, it doesn't matter. Excuse me, please, sorry. Okay, you stay this side, brother. You stay this side. You, brother, you go on this side. Okay. From underneath, lift up, please. Bismillah. La ilaha illallah. Slowly, please, slowly. Thank you, brothers. Bismillah. At the end of the day, we go back to our Creator. I know when my grandfather decides to take full retirement, that my mum will come in and make sure you know the business still runs smoothly and that everything's done how it's meant to be. They're really big personalities. I think they're more similar than they realise. Hi. Hello, granddaughter. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm alive. And what about you? Have you broken up from school? I have. I broke up on Friday. OK. Are you on your own or are you with your mother? I am on my own at the moment. Mum, I think she should be out of school by one. 
OK, will you, will you ask her kindly to give me a ring? Because I, I need to know what time she'll be at the mosque tomorrow. Because I, I want to make sure I'm here at the same time. All right. OK, see you tomorrow, inshallah. All right. OK, bye, 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 bye. bye. Sign. She's obviously busy with her teaching and stuff, but yeah, it'd be nice to see her in the office. Hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. You're right. It took us ages. Sorry, I'm late. Mm -hmm. Granddaughter. Hi, What's the mark on your head? Oh, uh -huh. very nice. How are you doing, Boo Boo? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How's kids? How's wife? Seriously, oh, it's a bit different in here now, isn't it? This is new, look. This oh, bit. yeah. There's that makes more sense. Huh? That makes more yeah, sense, doesn't it? Yeah, this is another little ante room. And you got this bit as well? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So cool. when are you coming back then, Moo? Well, you told me to come back and then you went, no, don't bother, I'm all right, I'm still yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, but you want me to come back? Oh, one day. I don't Inshallah. want to time people, no part time. Coming from an Asian family, you do try to live your parents' dreams very often and you try to do what pleases them, and I think I did that to a certain extent. And it wasn't until I was sort of in my 40s that I sort of went back to teaching and thinking, really, I should have done this a lot earlier. It really pulls you, and I hope Khalil doesn't feel that way. So Khalil behaving himself? He's a lovely boy. He's a lovely boy. Yeah, he's a lovely boy. I'm talking about my Khalil here. My, he's a man, he's not a boy, he's a man. He's a man? He's a man, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And he's behaving himself. Yes. He's good. Good. He's mad. He's developing a fan base now. He's developing a fan base? Yeah. Oh. Any marriage proposals? Well, we're still Not waiting yet. for now. I told you yesterday, actually. I told you yesterday. Yesterday, we said by tomorrow. Right, we're going. Have a nice time with Mummy. Inshallah, give her my salam, won't you? No, she's coming. I'm on duty anyway. You're off. I've always wanted her to come back, but she said she'd come back part time. But this is not a part time job. I need her to be here like five days a week. So unfortunately, she's not ready for that yet. So. <laughs> my grandson, with my guidance and his mum's support, he can one day do what I do. Body language is so important expressions on people's faces. This is also an education. And I, I need someone to steer the ship in the future. And I think he will be very successful. We could just follow the actual car to the burial side, inshallah. It's something that you've been doing since 1967. You just can't let go like that. While my mind is active and my body is active, I, I want to help and assist. I want to retire now. I'm, I'm just part-time, you can say. But I think I'll only retire when I die. Mystic. 